Hey everyone, I'm McDysis, and this is SCP Containment Breach. So recently I learned how to speed on this game, as in today. It's really short, it's incredibly fun, and I like playing it. However, there's a few things I didn't quite understand while doing it, and I couldn't really... I guess some of the other runs that helped understand, but there wasn't a dedicated marathon commentary run. Uh, so I like doing this. This is a pseudo kind of tutorial marathon commentary. It's a really quick run, world record's like 5 minutes, and honestly, my first run I got like 16 minutes. So... I feel like if you just want to run, I got 13 minutes. If you want to run this game, it's very easy, and I'll help you explain. First things first, I'm doing any percents, uh, no out of bounds, set seed. What that means is we don't we don't go out of bounds. We do ending A, and uh, it's set on the same seed, so it's always the same layout. There's random seed runs, which to that you just have to know what room is to find, which is still not the most difficult, but still. Also, we're doing good, so I hope yours went well, Shadow. I'm making a pseudo-tutorial for this because I couldn't really find one. I found, like, some tutorials, but nothing like dedicated marathon commentary. And I like doing these. Anyway, first things first, do new game, then you're setting a seed. The seed will always be the same. Currently, uh, in the uh, set seed category, they use 446, 456, 054. The name does not matter, so chat, what name do you want? And how's it going, Sather? Sass Mule. All right, we're doing Sass Mule. The name doesn't matter. Make sure you have this ticked off. If it's uh, if it's white, that means you're gonna watch the intro, which you know both loses you time and you don't really get the run. So make sure that you just turn that off. Also, while you can run on other difficulties, it's not recommended. Run on safe. Unless you're doing 100% uh, or something, you don't need to be anything else. Just run on safe. It's much easier, much nicer. As well, this game has an auto splitter and a load remover. So if you want to be using those, what you're going to want to do is get that from the speedrun.com page or the Discord. So they're good to have. Anyway, uh, 3, 2, 1, let's hit start. Time begins once you get rid of this load and if you have the auto splitter going on, the first split and the last split will go automatically. And yeah, we got a nice PB. I understand it's a lot more now and I kind of want to run that can fully explain things. Uh, and then we'll kind of go over everything and how I see it. I might die a few times. I'm saving. I'm not the best of this game yet, but it's fun. I'm, I'm liking this game a lot more than I thought I would. The only downside is that it does have slight RNG. Yeah, actually, a lot of RNG. <laughs> but even still, it's not as bad as just having a random seed. Random seeds would probably be hell, but I know the runners who do that, and it seems fun. All right, three, two, one, let's go. First things first, uh, you actually see in the chat right here that Shadow mentioned this. But, um, you can hold down W and D and that'll start you moving during the loading screen. So, any key to continue, you want to do W, D, and shift. You'll see right now what I'm talking about. See? So, you immediately start moving and it's in the good kind of spot you want to be. First things first, you don't want to approach Peanut, he'll kill you. As well, this soldier will kill you at a certain point in time. So, when he starts backing up, you can go roughly to about the end of this cubicle and you go to live. Once it flashes, you can start moving again. From here, you immediately want to go to the right. Going to the right is going to allow you to get the mask and the level 1 key card. The level 1 key card is going to be really necessary because that kind of gives you access to starting rooms. Next, you'll want to use the key card on this door right here, and you're going to see our friend Peanut. This has a level 2 key card. We need that and close the door behind you. If you don't close that door, Peanut will be able to potentially kill you, so you don't want to do that. Oh, that makes more sense. This is an actual lightning gate, so right now we're going to make our way all the way down. Uh, it's up to you if you want to close doors behind you. I recommend doing it for at least the first few. I only have to do it for all of them. Like, I've been closing the doors behind me until roughly about this door right here. Uh, starting at this door, Attention. you'll all see these two, the bloody footsteps. This means that this is going to be the way you're coming back. Right now our goal is to make it to SCP, I think it's 914. Uh, it's like the crafting section. I don't remember the name. So this door right here, uh, this is going to be one of the big ones. What I do is the moment I enter this room, I blink. Uh, it should sometimes automatically open the door, and it'll get this guy out of the way. You want to be full blinking meter by the time you get here, because if you're not, he can accidentally kill you. Next, close the door behind you. You won't be able to get in. Nice tips? Yeah. Now, level 2 key card on this door will open it, and you're going to be safe here for a little bit. Turn it to very fine and put all your stuff in this left one. If you really want to go fast, what you can do is you can uh, activate the machine and then drop everything in here, but I'm not really good at the game to the point where I can do this quite yet. I more often kill myself than not. Now I've activated the machine, we're going to do some safe scumming. What's going to happen is you're going to hear like a weird breeze or like an air pocket or something. Once you hear that, quick save the game. Or you can do it earlier too. That, that's the air pocket. The door will open. If you did it right, what should happen is... Uh, that mask should be moving location every time you load it, which you can see it is. What we're looking for is a blue card that says the word SCP on it. 
You might see credit cards. Credit cards are bad. You want a blue card that says SCP and the mask. We're doing two things right here. One, we're doubling or we're increasing our odds of getting an SCP Omni card, which is going to allow us to open every door in the game. Two, the mask is going to be powered up, meaning we get better stamina. They do have high interest rates. The Omni card doesn't mean necessary because it essentially acts as the best card in the game and will be able to get us throughout the entire game very quickly. Um, however, it's a rare chance you can get it. It's a 1 in 65 according to, uh, well, I guess Shadow and the rest of the community. So you're going to keep loading the game essentially. Since this game runs on end game timer though, it's not going to affect you too badly. Like it'll still tick down, but it'll only tick down as the door opens, which is pretty fair. Uh, alternatively, if you know if you want to know what you have to do, you'd have to find the other cards. And I think the old route, if I remember correctly, was you find, I think, the next level of card, and then it has an increased odds yet again, which just makes this strat easier. Generally, you either want to get a level 5 card and an Omni card, though, and this way is much safer. Level 5 card? That sounds about right. So, this way, you just keep going. The way you'll know when to go is you'll see a, uh, a white SCP logo on one of the cards. It takes a lot of loads. Like, I think the lowest I've ever had was three, although I've only been running this game for a couple hours so far. <laughs> so admittedly, I could be mistaken. And yeah, I, I would imagine, like, the strategy of having, like, the RNG Omni card, even getting the, wor even getting the worst attempts because of in-game time should benefit you over not having Omni. Plus, in theory, this is safer for the lack of... Uh, you don't have to move nearly as much. So for right now, it's going to be a lot of loads until we see that white SCP. This can be the main RNG factor of the game. That's an NGO. I don't own Little Nightmares, too. Right now, as well, uh, I want to mention that the moment we finish this up... Yeah, I got the save load remover. It definitely helped quite a lot. Although, I still was able to get decent times. I had one good run, but I died to Peanut. I didn't know Peanut can spawn in one of the rooms. All right, hold on, where are we at? I should fast forward this, I'm not going to, but I should. I should have counted the amount of tries. Probably. Come on, game, come on. No, maybe. Also, I have no idea what the voices are. I think they just randomly happen whenever you load in. Because suddenly you change all the RNG in the area, which can even be room spawn cynically. All right, come on. You'll see the card when we get it. This has been a bad run to have. I'm just saying, the name Sassmule has not been very lucky. Sassmule is not a lucky name. Oh, it's a loading screen. That makes sense. I can day one games. Bad RNG? I'm used to bad RNG. I play Clock Tower. It happens a lot. By the way, for anyone wondering, this is a 1 in 65 chance. Apparently, there is a way to lower the odds to a 1 in 42, I think, if you get another achievement. But, essentially, you're kind of going to be shafted by the 1 in 65. There's also a way you grab both cards, because it increases the odds. Come on. We can do this. And an E card? Or a third card. Gotcha. Oh, I'm guessing you grab the third card from the, uh, the one thing. The, uh, the infinite rooms. I didn't get really lucky last time. Jesus Christ. This is really bad luck. It's always, yeah, the endless hall. I'm getting absolutely shafted. Absolutely shafted. Someday we'll have this better. Someday. There it is. Okay, so we finally got the card, and we're good to go. You can see it says unlimited access. I save here because I don't want to do that shit again. Now, equip the gas mask. The gas mask is going to allow us to have infinite stamina in the upcoming areas. Now, for one, I don't know where Peanut is, so I always take a look. Oh, he's not in the room. What? That just takes so long he didn't spawn in? What the fuck? Okay, neat. Normally, he spawns. I have no idea where the fuck he went. So now, you can see I'm kind of breezing through. By the way, you want to do a diagonal in that room with the black gunk on the ground, because if you walk straight forward into it, you're going to fall into a 106 pocket. Wait, is it 106 or 96? Either way, the, uh, the unrelenting old man. That guy. So right now, we're going to be going up into this area, which is two lefts. I want to redo this. I want to redo this run. Either way, fuck it, let's keep going. 
Uh, you make a left at the first uh, pocket after the SCPs I mentioned. Now we're gonna make two lefts. One. Two. You keep advancing after this. Uh, this is gonna be a particular route that's gonna get us forward. Make a left again after you pass the body. And then this is gonna lead us to where we need to be. Um, you can see the skull. That's a good indication of this. After this, you're gonna hit a fork. Make a right at this fork. By making a right, we can then make a left at the next fork. And this is gonna bring us to high containment zone. So, the thing right now is, uh, 106 may spawn here, which is pretty risky. I think he spawns right here. But you guys hear about that noise? You have to be very careful, meaning we're gonna be very fast in this next pocket. I save here just in case. Uh, Peanut's gonna be in this room, so immediately walk in and then close, and then walk out very quickly. As well, uh, both of you can get tag teamed by Peanut and 106, so be very careful in these two rooms. Uh, quick saving is very important throughout the area. Now, we can use our Omni Key for most of these doors, as you can see. I opened this door early, because that's going to lead us to SCP-79. Uh, that's going to be the computer, which is quite nice. Uh, by going to the room after that, though, we make our way over to the offices. Uh, the offices are going to be the next and final area of the game, realistically. And the whole goal is going to be turning on and off the remote control. Now, very important. Wait, and turn this back on. Unless you have night vision, this will be really hard to see where you're going. So, it's kind of imperative you want to do that one. I did explain why we're wearing the mask, so you just entered the stamina. I explained that earlier. Breaking your way back to that door I just opened. Now, very important, once again, before you open this door, blink. Uh, Peanut could be behind the door here. Also, again, quick save blink. Very important combination of things to do. Look around the whole room. If you see Peanut, that's, you know, you know what to do. Otherwise, just keep it going. No peanut, that's fine. I have no idea where the crafty bastard is, but I like to do this just in case. You don't need to close the door, but just kind of be aware that the peanut can be lurking around. Alright, now to finish up, we're going to go back to the electric room. Again, peanut can spawn up here, keep that in mind. Doesn't lead in. Turn this back on. Now that we've done that, we can make our way over to the entrance. We're almost done. What this does is this opens the gate. Uh, the gate is going to be one of the finale areas. Uh, there are two dates you can go to. So what we're going to do is we're going to go right, and then we're going to just keep making our way down until we hit a fork. That fork can go left. It's very important, though, that as you're maneuvering through these rooms, that you keep an eye out for Peanut. It's very important. All right, we're going to make a left. And then there's going to be an electric gate coming up soon. Now this electric gate, what you're going to do is you're going to wait. Now, you want to run up to it so it uh, sparks. Is that the doctor? Can he pass us? He can. Alright, we're gonna have to play and make a little detour. I got unlucky. Is he gonna follow me? Come on, homie. Okay. So we're gonna make a little detour. I got really unlucky. Alright. Approach the gate, get the electricity going, and then run through it. Uh, that allows you to pass safely, uh, so you want to make sure you do that. Now, we're making it right after that. We are making our way to this gate. Uh, this is going to be the finale. This is gate A. The main category you want to be on gate A. You don't want to go to gate B. You want to go for gate A. If you're doing ending B, go to gate B. So now, all you got to do is make your way to freedom. That's all you got to do. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to approach gate A, but go down the stairs. Uh, from here, you're going to need that Omni card once again. You're going to keep booking it through. You have two uh, key card doors. And then you can go down the stairs. So, we're gonna open. And now you just run down the hallway and then the run is done. Overall, it's a pretty straightforward run. Not too bad here. And then time ends automatically with you have the autos. You know Otherwise, it ends once you get this little cutscene. Great job us. with the run so far. Thank you, Shadow. I, I understand this pretty well. Uh, it's a really easy speed run once you get the hang of it. The only thing, though, is endgame can be pretty unlucky. Honestly, my endgame wasn't bad. Like, my endgame wasn't bad. Although, like, I know it says plus 240. I didn't lose that time from the endgame. I lost all that time from having to load and load and load and load. So, sure, you need a bit of luck to do this, but it's really, really fun. Once you get the hang of it, it's quite nice. But yeah, also, Janner, man, it's not my end game that needed help there. I needed help on the early game. The only issue I had, I think, was SCP-79. Yeah, world record is about five minutes. All right. Overall, though, if you like this, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helps you run the game. Most of the game is pretty straightforward. It's not too difficult. Uh, the biggest things are knowing that you need to go to the 
uh, very end room for SCP-914, so you can make the upgraded mask, which will help you throughout the run, and then as well, you need to make the Omni card. The Omni card's the biggest issue. End game is anything past key cards? I guess that's fair. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. We're gonna do more in a moment here, but yeah, that was Marathon.